come to Ms. Mshorol. Yes. Your objection. What are we busy with with the sergeant here? Yes. Uh, indeed, my lord, that is the nub of the matter. Yeah, what we, are we busy we with? We are busy with um, a, a questioning or interview that uh, Sergeant Mohani conducted with a suspect. Yes. Yeah. And um, the boardroom. Yes, in the boardroom. Mm. Um, in other ways, we're not busy with the taking of a, of a warning statement, yeah. um, but just merely a, um, uh, an, an interview, an informal interview that a police officer uh, had <coughs> with, uh, with, with, with his suspect. Is that the background to the yes. issue? Yes, the, indeed, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Mshololo, let me understand you. What are we dealing with? We are dealing with the interview which took place between the suspect and the witness at the courtroom. Right. Where, it's an interview. It's an interview. Yeah. What about it? Yes. Then, my lord, my submission is that because the witness said he explained the rights, he explained the allegations, mm -hmm. and the accused responded. Therefore, that interview ought to have been recorded. Right? Yes, my lord. That, that's if it's not can. recorded? It's my submission, my lord. The court can make a ruling. Yeah, fine. Is that, is that what you, you are dealing with? Is that what your colleague is dealing with? That's what Now, how does this form come into play? My lord. This form which you say <coughs> the court must peruse. It's because, my lord, this form says mm. statement regarding interview with the suspect. Mm. Hence, I refer to this witness to that form. <coughs> and it says, my lord, on, on, on the first page, statement regarding interview with suspect. Paragraph one, my lord. Oh, yeah, reading paragraph one, where it says the form must be completed every time a suspect is questioned, irrespective of whether the suspect is in detention after an arrest or not, yes. where any space provided on the form is insufficient, continue yes. on a folio attached to the folio of that page. Yes. And folios must be signed by the suspect, the interpreter. So you are saying this form is applicable, in other words? My Lord, it, that's my respectful submission. Okay, Lord, to you are need to rule on that. To, to say, uh, during that interview... It must be signed, the form must, must be signed it, according to you. It, it must be recorded, my Lord. Yeah. Although, although, my Lord, I am not uh, saying that uh, the, the witness wa was bound to use this as it's... No, 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 no sir. The submission is that it must be filled this form, or what is your submission? Yes, it must be. It my must Lord, be filled. My Lord, can I just refer this honorable court to the, just one judgment? Which one I, I'll is be that? Quick, I'll be quick, my Lord. I won't waste the court's time. Which judgment is it? It's the Henry Foster and the Minister of Safety and Security. It's judgment by... Uh, what is? Yes. I've read this judgment. Yes. yes. It's, a, it's about damages. Uh, yes. A lawful Lord. arrest and the assault of a suspect who yes. subsequently Obviously, the charges were withdrawn because there was not sufficient evidence. Yes, my lord, but there is a principle that I want uh, that I want to bring it to the attention which, of this yeah, court. Okay, fine. Bring it. To which which principle is it? Thank that? you, my lord. On uh, on page twenty three, paragraph twenty. Wait, wait. I'm going there. Yes. Page. Wait, 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 wait. Page twenty three. Wait, wait, wait. <coughs> page twenty three. Page 23, it's paragraph 28, my lord. Paragraph 28? Yes. Yes, put it on, 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 on record. Yes, my lord. Paragraph 28, <coughs> under warning statements, my lord, it says, express provision is made in every warning statement in this court's jurisdiction for the completion of a warning statement each and every time that a suspect is interviewed. Paragraph 29, the constitutional protection provided for in terms of section 35 of the constitution to arrestees is embodied in this principle. There is no justification for any interview with a suspect who has been arrested or called in for questioning to take place without a warning statement being completed. 
paragraph 30, my lord, the very term warning statement indicates that the person is a suspect and has been warned of his rights and in particular his rights to remain silent before any such interview may take place. Paragraph 31, it serves no purpose to attempt to recognize that an arrestee is not obliged to say anything, make any admissions, or answer any questions unless he is specifically forewarned of these rights and signs in the warning statement that he has been so forewarned prior to any interview or interrogation taking place. My Lord, I will skip all these paragraphs and then just go to uh, uh, paragraph 33. Mm. Oh, sorry, my lord, I have not finished. Uh, yeah, I'll skip this. And then paragraph 34. 34, my lord, the next page on mm. page 24, which says, It was stunning to hear that both defendants' witnesses, who were, ex who were experienced policemen, believed that they were entitled to question a suspect or arrestee at any time that they wish to do so without being compelled to complete a warning statement. And the last reference, my lord, is uh, just one paragraph <coughs> before it goes to, uh, I'll, I'll summarize it, my lord, paragraph 38.2. Paragraph 38.2, I'll be quick, my lord. It, wherein it refers to the warning statement which is heeded. Statement regarding interview with yeah, suspect. Paragraph, no? paragraph 38.2, my lord. Mm. <coughs> 38.2. Yeah. Yes, my lord. It says, the warning statement which is heeded, statement regarding interview <coughs> with suspect. It is referred to as SAP S3M document and embodies 12 pages on the cover and on every first page under the insignia of the South African police statement. The statement regarding interview with the suspect. This form must be completed every time the suspect is questioned, irrespective of whether the suspect is in detention after an arrest or not. <coughs> Where any space provided on the form is insufficient, continue on the portfolio and attach the portfolio to that page. Folios must be signed by the suspect, interpreter, deponent, and commissioner of oaths. Thereafter, my lord, on the same paragraph, the interviewing police officer is required to record that he has informed the suspect of the allegations that he is investigating against him, <coughs> her or her, to ensure that he understands the allegations. There are numerous introductory paragraphs and forms that require completion. The suspect is entitled to make, or if he wishes to do so, where, where after both suspects and the member of the SAPS are required to sign the document. All of the Constitutional safeguards provided for in respect of arrest, accused, and detained person are contained here in, and the document sets out each and every step that must be followed in completion thereof. Paragraph, this is the, the last, second last paragraph I'm referring this quote mm. to, my lord. There is no basis in law on paragraph 19, my lord. Mm. Paragraph 39. Yes, paragraph 39. There is no basis in law or fact to conduct any type of an interview or interrogation without completing such a document. Any attempt to do so will render the arrest and detention of the suspect not only unconstitutional but unlawful. I am fortified in my view that the arrest and subsequent detention of the plaintiff in this matter was not, uh, <coughs> well, it, this is for, for the judgment of this case, my lord. But can I just read it to complete the paragraph? Mm. The matter was not only unconstitutional but unlawfully because the defendant's witnesses testified under oath that they were of the view that they were entitled to interview and interrogate the plaintiff without having completed such a document. This can never be the case. The express term of the document make it abundantly clear that when a suspect signs them, he or she does so in order to acknowledge that he has been notified 
of his or her rights and he understands them. Paragraph 40, the practice whereby these documents are completed merely satisfies the prosecutor that a suspect may now be taken to court is to be frowned upon and not condoned by this court. It and it's a senior judge. It's a senior judge who says that. Yeah. How it is? Yes, ma'am. It seems that notice in terms of the constitution is completed before the person is accepted into the cells, but merely as formally formality and for not and no and for no other purpose. The warning statement is also completed merely as a formality that is required for administrative purposes or as part of the paperwork, but not for the intended purposes. As previously stated. Mere, mere leave service is paid to the rights embodied in the constitution as detailed in the documents. They are significant in determining whether an arrest or subsequent detention are lawful or not, can, can never be overemphasized. My, my, my submission, my lord, uh, to this court is that this form it does not, my lord, necessarily say it must be completed when the suspect is charged. But this form says, as I have read it into the record, it must be completed whenever there is an interview between who must the suspects. Who must complete it? It must be completed by the person interviewing the suspect. By the police person? Eh? By the police person, yes, my lord. Interviewing the suspect. If, if, if I can go further, it even says the number of the people who were present during the interview should also be uh, recorded. My lord. Have you read Preller's remarks? No, my lord. Uh, those are my submissions. Yeah, yeah, fine. No, no, no. I want you to, yes. to listen to what. Because you, you brought this judgment. Yes, yes ma'am. This was a three bench judgment. Prela was the senior judge. Manamela, Etting, and Kumalo was the other judge. But this is what Prela uh, said. Manamela was the scribe, and the two judges overruled him. Mm. I have had the benefit of the judgment of my learned brother, but reluctantly find myself unable to agree with the conclusion to which he has come. The evidence was comprehensively dealt with in the judgment of the Court of Court, and there is no need to repeat it here. Suffice it to say that there were no misdirections in the judgment, and nor did counsel argue to the contrary. The main problem in this appeal arose from the remarks perhaps inadvertently made by the Court of Court in its judgment on the admissibility of certain crimes as to his co-accused. It is therefore clear that courts, the court was well aware of the constitutional rights of the five accused and the discretionary nature of the exclusionary rule contained in section 35.5 of the constitution. The subsection reads, evidence obtained in a manner that violates any right in the Bill of Rights must be excluded if the admission of that evidence would render the trial unfair or otherwise detrimental to the administration of justice. The prohibition is against the admission of evidence obtained by a process that violates the constitutional rights of the accused. That means only that if the accused person has, for example, been tortured or assaulted in order to force information from him, that information must be excluded. No finding to that effect was made in the judgment. The rule does not mean that any improper conduct, even if unconnected to the making of the statement, results in the exclusion of the evidence. That would be an application of the controversial rigid exclusionary rule of the North American law. I think it's State versus Ross, that case. The trial court is the primary trial of fact, and this court can only interfere with the finding if we are satisfied that it is wrong. A vague suspicion that all was not kosher and not, is not enough. Unfortunately, we don't know how exactly what the learned judge had in mind with this remark, but the fact is that he considered every detail of the relevant evidence very carefully and came to the conclusion that the evidence should be admitted. In the process, he expressly rejected the contentions of the appellants that they had been tortured, as well as their evidence that they had made the statement and done the pointing out on that. Somebody interfered with it. Where's the fourth page here? <coughs> Somebody removed it. Is that page four? 
Aqui não é refém de fogo. Thank you. Then paragraph 92 reads, it's page 4. One of the main contentions No, no, let's still read page 90. Paragraph 86, 88, sorry, he says, it is not necessary to set out the evidence adduced in the court below as Manamela A.J. has done in some detail in, in his judgment. My view and position in the matter is informed by the approach advocated by the court in take and safe trading CC versus Standard Bank of South Africa 2004-1. All South Africa SA 597 SCA 2004, where it was stated, a criminal trial is not a game where one side is entitled to claim the benefit of any omission or mistake made by the other side. And the judge's position in a criminal trial is not merely that of an empire to see that the rules of the games are observed by both sides. A judge is an administrator of justice. He's not merely a figurehead. He has not only to direct and control the proceedings according to recognize the rules of procedure, but to see that justice is done. Every person is, in short, a right to fair treatment as a suspect and a fair trial as an accused by the Constitution. Section 35 commands that arrest processes and criminal trials be conducted in accordance with the basic principles of justice and fairness to guarantee the protection subsection 5 thereof makes provision for the exclusion of evidence that has been procured in a manner that violates any right of the bill of rights if the admission of that evidence would render the trial unfair or otherwise be detrimental to the administration of justice to ensure a fair trial a presiding officer or judge may therefore only consider evidence obtained legitimately to establish whether or not an accused is guilty however in terms of subsection 5 if the admission of the evidence would not render the trial unfair or detrimental to the administration of justice, even though it might have been in a manner obtained, in a manner that violates a bill of right, it will not necessarily be excluded. Therefore, not every violation of a bill of a, a right protected by the bill of right leads to exclusion. See in this regard S versus Lowe and others 2002. SCA, ZCA, ZACA 70, 2002, 2 SACR 325, SCA. The section does not couple the discretion to exclude directly to the violation of a right as argued on behalf of the applicant, but to the consequential and fair trial. Therefore, the jurisdictional prerequisites for the exercise of the discretion to exclude is the requirement of unfairness or the prejudice to the administration of justice. What the subsection <coughs> accords are fundamental and absolute is the right to a fair trial. In S versus Tandra, 207 SCA, 34 RSC 8, Cameron 116 observed the pre-constitutional approach to the exclusion of improperly obtain evidence to be in these terms. The noble feature of the constitutional specific exclusionary provision is that it does not provide for automatic exclusion of unconstitutionally obtained evidence. Evidence must be excluded only if A, it renders the trial unfair, B, otherwise detrimental to the administration of justice. This entails that <coughs> admitting the impugned evidence could damage the administration of justice in ways that could leave the fairness of the trial intact, but where Admitting the evidence renders the trial itself unfair. The administration of, of justice is always damaged. Differently put, evidence must be excluded in all cases where the admission 
is detrimental to the administration of justice, excluding the subset of cases where it renders the trial unfair. The provision plainly envisages cases where evidence should be excluded for broad public policy reasons beyond fairness and individual, individual fairness and of the accused. Kachalia, in S. versus Mtombo, said the following. Public policy in this context is concerned not only to ensure that the guilty are held accountable, it also is concerned with the propriety of the conduct of investigating and prosecutorial agencies in securing evidence against criminal suspects. It involves <coughs> considering the nature of the violation and the impact that evidence obtained as a result thereof will have not only on a particular case, but also on the integrity of the administration of justice in the long term. Public policy, therefore, sets itself firmly against admitting evidence obtained in deliberate or flagrant <coughs> violation of the Constitution. If, on the other hand, the conduct of the police is reasonable and justifiable, the evidence is less likely to be excluded, even if obtained through an infringement of the Constitution. This accords with what uh, Kirchler said in the case of K versus Attorney General of the Transvaal, 1996 Constitutional Court case, where it says sometimes even unconstitutionally obtained evidence because of the demands of public policy and the demands of fairness in the administration of justice may be admitted, even if you are, you are aware of the case. Yes, ma'am. So it, this, this case of uh, Hodes, it's not the be it and the be all. That's the constitutional I've quoted you two constitutional cases, the where they say even unconstitutionally obtained evidence. Do you have that? Hello? Key, Attorney General of the Let's read it so that everybody knows it. Right? Do you have it? Yeah, you just mm -hmm. find it quickly. Yeah, just find it. Yeah, you, you've got the computer. So the case has to delve into the intricacies of public policy, the fairness, etc. And this, according to me, this form has got no force of law. Do you agree with it? As the court reasons. Yeah, it has no force of law. It's a guideline. But I'm not stopping you from arguing. You can argue that. I'm just saying preliminary. Where's that case? Oh, my learned friend is finding it. Sir. No, man, just find it. Because people, when they read the Constitution, they all say, if the evidence is unconstitutionally ac acquired, therefore, it is not admissible. Uh -uh. You, fe you, fe you further go and examine the phenomena and the exigency under which that evidence has been acquired, the demands of public policy, the demands of fairness, <laughs> the tension between the demands of the police to maintain law and order, and the perceptions of the public regarding the application of fairness. After that, we can con conclude whatever course examination we, we, we want. May other councils be given opportunity to make submissions? Yes, yes, them. no, everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Everybody. So Hodes has got a point, but the point is, as I understand the evidence of this witness, predicated on that interview, amongst other interviews, he repaired to Caltonville to go and further investigate. That's what he says, not me. 
When he got to Peltonville, Vinita came and they went to see the personnel manager and the personnel manager made a statement to them. Not, can other councils uh, respond to yeah, yeah. No, no, we're going to read this. We're going to read this and then everybody is entitled to, to respond. As the court pleases. Sorry, let's, let's go and face that case. <coughs> 1996, Attorney General of the Transvaal. Just don't take a We have it in your computer. Yeah, P. P. This is K E Y. This is Attorney General of the Transvaal, 1996, Constitutional Court, That's the one. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you know. <coughs> okay, should be yeah, we should go class. By the way, my registrar found the law. <coughs> yes, we. It's, it's paragraph, paragraph 23 of the yeah, judgment. Paragraph 23. Uh, it says, at times, fairness might require that evidence unconstitutionally obtained be excluded, but there will also be times <coughs> when fairness will require that evidence, albeit obtained unconstitutionally, never, <coughs> nevertheless be admitted. Yeah. Go on. Uh, well, and it says if, if the evidence to which applicant objects is tendered in criminal proceedings against him, he will be entitled at that stage to raise objections to its admissibility. It will then be for the trial judge to decide whether the circumstances are such that fairness require the evidence to be excluded. It follows that the applicant is not entitled to an order from this court in these proceedings, that the evidence secured as a result of the searches and seizures will be inadmissible in criminal proceedings against him. Um, and, and yeah, I don't think the... Yeah, read that tension. Why, why critical reasons like this? Oh, okay. Because uh, some of us may not know it. Um, it talks about the tension. In parag there's paragraph, uh, paragraph 13. <coughs> uh, says, in, in any democratic criminal justice system, <coughs> yes. There is a tension between, on the one hand, That's it. the public interest in bringing, in bringing criminals to book, right. uh, and on the other hand, the equally <coughs> great public interest in ensuring that justice is manifestly done to all, even though suspected of conduct which would put them beyond the pale. To be sure, a prominent feature of that tension is the universal and unceasing endeavor by international human rights bodies, enlightened legislatures and courts to prevent or curtail <coughs> excessive zeal by the state agencies in the prevention, investigation, or prosecution of crime. But none of that means sympathy for crime and its perpetrators nor does it mean a predilection for technical <coughs> niceties stratagems. and ingenuous legal stratagems. Mm. What the Constitution demands is that the accused be given a fair okay. trial. Mm. Ultimately, as it was held in Ferreira versus Levine, fairness is an issue which has to be decided upon the facts of each case, and the trial judge is the person best placed to take the decision. At times, fairness might require that evidence unconstitutionally obtained be excluded, but there will also be times when fairness will require that evidence albeit obtained unconstitutionally never, nevertheless be admitted. Okay, yes, Mr. Mnisi. Any, oh, Mr. Gomezon, sorry. Any, any submissions? 
Court, please. My Lord, uh, my submission, uh, firstly, I would agree with the principle that each case is decided on its own merits. Mm -hmm. Under the circumstances of this exercise or this, this uh, <coughs> discussion is that mm -hmm. when we look at the interview that uh, <coughs> was conducted or was held in the boardroom, mm -hmm. it was held under a different pretext mm -hmm. from the officer. Mm -hmm. He was booked out from the, from the police cells to the boardroom under a very wrong case, <coughs> case 163 of 10 <coughs> When an interview is carried, is carried in terms of a docket that is the accused is now facing on the charges of a case docket under 636. Mm. My Lord, the unfair part of the principle in the doctrine of fairness mm. lies on the aspect that if a right was explained to to the accused, it was in respect of cast number 163 and changing tune when they, they are in the boardroom. So now the, the, the accused is no longer, as per the evidence of the, there's no evidence before this honorable court that accused was interviewed in terms of the Onongoma case. But all that we know before this honorable court is that an interview was conducted relating to the whereabouts of accused number two on the date of the 26th of October 2014. Is that fair for the accused in the cause of administering justice to be uh, taken by surprise to say, this is what we arrested you for, but now we are subjected now to these particular allegations. Please provide us. To what extent did the rights were explained, especially under cast number 636? Second fold of my submission is that it's based on the evidence that is before this honorable court that at all material times when the <coughs> accused number two is booked in and out, there's no indication, there's no entry that he was subjected to an investigation under uh, cast number 636. So that would that amount to unfairness and that would jeopardize to proper functioning of justice system. In this, in this regard, as the facts are, uh, as matters are decided on their own merits, it is my sub humble submission that uh, accused number two, they should have actually gave him a clinch or a, 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 an information. He's the one that he received an in, information earlier that he is involved in the murder case of Sons of Neo. But when he is booked out, when the rights, the rights are read in terms of Exhibit LL, they are read under a very wrong case number. Okay, thanks. That's my submission. Yes, Mr. Nisi? Yes, it is important. Yes, 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 no problem. As it is the court, madam. Madam, I think there's a bit of a conflation. A, a, a Con conflation. A conflation of issues. Yeah, I mentioned them. Yes, madam. When this issue was raised by my colleague, Advocate Msholono, mm. and indicated that there is authority, or in fact, and each time the <coughs> suspect is being interviewed, that interview needs to be recorded. Then my colleague for the state stood up and said, but that, that, that is not always the case. Then the court also got in and said, as far as the court understands the process, is that a warning statement is only supposed to be filled in as and when the suspect has been charged for him to be prepared for court. Mm -hmm. My colleague further insisted that, but, that is actually not exactly the case. That is when this commotion or this argument actually started. In order to satisfy himself, then the court invited all parties 
to bring authority before court mm. to support their submission mm. in respect of what they believe in. The defense, my colleague, Advocate Msololo, brought a judgment that specifically addresses mm. the issue that the court said, bring judgment, bring an authority to convince me. We were expecting the state as well to bring a judgment <coughs> that will go contrary to what the judgment that has been brought by my colleague is saying. The state has it. Okay, in state, what is happening now, my lord? We are trying to, to confuse two issues that are very distinct. Whether or not it is in the interest of justice, that evidence that is sometimes unconstitutionally obtained should be obtained or what. But this is not the crux of the investigation as to why we actually had to come here. In the judgment of, uh, of, uh, of Hodes SC, it's very clear. The, in, the statements regarding with the interview with the suspect, it's very clear. Each time there's an interview with the suspect, whether or not that suspect is arrested, this document must be filled in with no exceptions. I won't go back and yeah, refer to, to what my colleague has said. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard you. But now, um, there's also a referral to the case of, uh, to, to what the Honorable Judge Prela said. These two cases are totally distinguishable mm -hmm. because in the Prela case, my lord, it was not about whether or not each time that a suspect has been interviewed, this document 3M in brackets, small letter M, must be filled in. It was only a determination on whether or not the statements that were used in those in the in the in the in the in the decision of this case should be used against the accused person in this case or why? Mm -hmm. So these two cases are totally distinguishable. As I am standing here, Manuel, I am still expecting the state to present to the court an authority that says no. It is still fine for a suspect to be interviewed without having to fill this uh, SAP. 3M in bracket M. The state is not the state is not okay, providing such information. So basically, we are not saying, my lord, that the court should make a decision no, here not, and now. I'm not going to make. Hey, me, I'm not. Me, I'm not confused. <laughs> I'm not going to make a decision now. You are arguing the law. I'm going to make a decision at the end of the case. Uh, oh. <coughs> Don't go about saying, hey, let's charge you. Hey. <laughs> that is what I'm, I'm trying. listening to the principle of the law. Yeah. And the decision which I will make will be predicated in the sense that I gave all of you a chance for the input yes, of the very God. issue yeah. which is being debated yes. in this case. But I'm not making a finding. I'm not making a ruling. Never. Yes, my lord. That is basically would have been my next point. That I'm going to make a ruling. And no. I intend to say, my lord, mm. that when my colleague, Advocate Mishololo, raised the issue of the interview with the suspect in the boardroom yeah. and whether or not this form was filled, it should be something that should be, uh, uh, my colleague should actually be allowed to proceed with that form of cross-examination. It will then only after all the evidence at the end of it all has been heard. I said then that. The court ask come ask your colleague. I said that to her. Didn't I say that to you, ma'am, Sholol? That I'm not stopping you from going ahead with the <coughs> strategy of the cross-examination you are course on. Didn't not, I say that? Not, the problem is that when uh, after All I said, do you admit that this form doesn't have statutory application? That's all. Not, and you said no. Not, but I never said to you, Stop your cross-examination. Never. I will never say that to any council. My lord, after I have been uh, granted that leave, my yeah. lord, the state objected. No, the but state I, decide, objected. I decide whether you continue or not. Not, not Mr. Baloy. Okay. The state objected, then the court said we must make submissions. Yeah. That's where we are in, my lord. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Numalo. Oh, are you still on? Yes. No, I, I just wanted to wrap up, my lord. Oh, I see. Okay. Therefore, my lord, it will be very precarious, actually it will be a precarious procedure to at this point decide this thing as if it is final.
Who's going to decide it? I, I told you I'm going to decide at the end of the case. I've, I've, the reason why I'm saying this, my lord, is because I, 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 I hear already there are authorities that have been referred to which do not specifically deal pertinently with the issue that the court has raised. Yeah, in concerns. other words, you and Mushalala, Mr. Mushalala, and Mamalo, and uh, Mr. Mugumezuru, Baloi, at the end of the case, they're still going to have to argue. As it please the court, my About the admissibility of these statements and confessions and pointing out, how my daughter. And more particularly with regard to the, that interview yes. that was had in the boardroom, where in this argue. form was not fit. Thank you, Manuel. At this that stage, my submission. I had two contrasting legal submissions. Yes. That's all. Thank you, Manuel. All right. Yes, Mr. Nimaru. And I can, I may just add, other judges just keep quiet. They keep quiet and keep quiet and then yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, and thereafter they come with a decision. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't do that. Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Mumal. My, 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 my starting, starting point will be that uh, it is not enough for the police <coughs> to use the, the SAP 14A because we've been hearing that the SAP 14A was used, uh, that is before and <coughs> after the accused, that is accused number two was at the bottom. As a guideline. Yeah, as a guideline. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll re-emphasize uh, and follow the, the decision of uh, Holtz SC <coughs> to the effect that whenever the interview is conducted with the suspect, it must be recorded. And uh, the statement regarding interviewed suspect form must be used. Um, I'm having uh, the understanding, my lord, that <coughs> if that is not followed, then it violates the accused rights in terms of Section 35 of the Constitution. And therefore, in terms of Section 35.5 of the Constitution, it stipulates that evidence obtained in violation of the accused rights must be excluded if that or the admission of that evidence will render the yeah, no, section of justice into this repute. Uh, it, it, this uh, form gives an obligation. It's an obligation to the police to say whenever, whenever the interview is conducted with suspect, uh, this uh, form must be used. Yeah, I agree with you. You see, it's incumbent upon you as advocates of this court to make representations to the Minister of Justice to pass regulations yes. addressing the very exigence. Yes. Mind you, and it looks like there will be a number of representations. Yes, you have a right. As that's how the law develops. Yes. yes. And there's a, a, a lacuna in the law. Yes. The yes. persons who practice in this court yes. they must take it upon themselves yes. to address that lacuna so that the Minister of Justice, yes. Lamola, yes. must address that. Yes. Yes. Because it's going to recare, 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 recare. That's why you have nine provinces and you get nine different decisions in all the nine provinces. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sholo, you are continuing. No. You are continuing with your cross-examination. No, my lord, we are still waiting for this. No, no, you are continuing with your cross-examination. Is that not so? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, now we listen to Ubaloi. Remember I said I'm not deciding the issue now. I'm going to listen and hear all of you what you say. So Baloi must say whatever he wants to say. Thereafter, you continue with yes, your cross-examination. Yes, okay. my Is it so difficult, my lord? Yes, my lord. Yes, Mr. Baloi. Uh, as a court please, my lord, we, we just want to come from a slightly different angle. Mm. And we raise an objection based on purely issue of uh, evidence, of relevance. Mm. You know, my lord, we, we objected on the basis that the questioning is not relevant in the uh, sense that <coughs> my, my learned friend um, was pursuing a line of questioning that says um, the accused, accused number two made a statement uh, from the evidence that has been given by the witness. Uh, I'm not even sure if one can put it as high as that to say that the accused made a statement. 
what we have before court, my lord, is made a denial. Yes, it's 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's evidence by Sergeant Mohani that says uh, we convened in the boardroom with the accused. I uh, want him according to his rights, and um, I. As a suspect, I informed him what the uh, purpose of the interview was, yeah. and and the accused gave an explanation. I don't know if one can say that it's, an, it's a statement. He gives an explanation. Mm -hmm. He says um, he, he doesn't even tell him about the date on which the offense was committed. He says I'm investigate, investigating the uh, case of uh, the death of Mr. Senzo Maiwa. And the accused then, out of his own volition, says, well, I know about that matter. I read about it in the newspaper. Is that a statement? We submit with the greatest of respect, my lord, that if one looks at the form that my learned friend wishes to, uh, to use to cross-examine this witness, it refers to a, some sort of a, a, a formal statement. Um, all that the all that Sergeant Mukhan was doing was to uh, offer the uh, accused number two the opportunity of an explanation. And he says, I was at work. And that uh, uh, defense is pursued. Uh, suppose, my, my Lord, for, for one moment, that if the explanation that the accused gave that he was at work, if the talking records confirmed his version, that would have been the end of the matter. We, we, um, there would have been no need to pursue the, you know, the, the matter any further. It could have never been the intention, and it, even with the judgment that uh, my late friend has referred to, that where um, an, excuse, an accused gives an explanation that the formal process that my learned friend wants to embark upon that, that should be followed. Um, these are just prelim preliminary issues that are aimed at establishing whether um, a formal statement or a, you know, a statement should be obtained from the accused at a later stage, and which happened in this case, my lord, uh, is after the, these pre preliminary processes, uh, a formal statement uh, uh, was obtained uh, to which the investigating officer um, will, will, will refer to when, when, uh, when he testifies. It can never have been the intention of the judgment uh, by uh, Ben Judge Horus to say that in every instance where there's that preliminary inquiry, that this formal process uh, should be uh, embarked upon, that a, uh, a, a form should be completed. And the form speaks for itself. You know, it talks about a, a, a warning statement. It talks about the involvement of the prosecutor the, the, the station commissioner. Um, we submit with the greatest respect this it envisage a process where uh, a, a formal statement um, is intended to uh, to be taken from from an accused. And if one looks at the discussion um, under this topic, it all results under section two one seven, uh, which deals with uh, you know the, the the confession. So. Um, we submit, my lord, that uh, the, the, the intention here with this form um, and with the process that my learned friends wants to embark upon is if, or in the case where a, 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 if a, a, a statement of, of some sort has been made. Uh, we also want to refer to the judge's rules, uh, my lord. Um, we know that they have, uh, as it were, been um, uh, taken over or subsumed by the, uh, by the Constitution, but uh, this rule still serves as a guide. What is that, 1946? Yes. Uh, 1940? Yeah. And 1931. 41, when yes. I was they, on the they, they, were they were approved at a conference in Cape Town in 1931. Yeah. And uh, the writer Himstra describes the papers as follows, he says, uh, these rules are administrative directives for the guidance of the police force. Um, and it says, uh, 
the judge's rules are mainly of historical interest because they are longer in effect. Their role uh, having to a large extent been taken over by the norms in the Constitution. The following is important. They nevertheless remain general guidelines for the police <coughs> and the courts for the everyday conduct of police officers in respect of, uh, of suspects. <coughs> And in this instance, um, uh, we want to refer to um, uh, Rule 5, which says, where a person in custody <coughs> wishes to volunteer a statement, he should be allowed to make it, but he should first be cautioned. And this is contained in Section 35. Um, which distinguish between an arrested person and 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 uh, and, and a detained person, um, and Section 35 uh, <coughs> states that uh, the the person the person in in detention and custody should be informed of the right to remain silent, to be informed promptly of the right to remain silent, and uh, and of the consequences consequences of not remaining silent and not to be compelled to make any confession or admission that could be used in evidence against the person. So if, if one looks, you know, once again, my Lord, this buttress the point that we have the view that the in this instance one cannot really say that the accused made a statement because if one looks at uh, um, subparagraph C, it says not to be compelled to make any confession or admission Mm -hmm. that, that could be used as evidence against that, that, um, that, that person. And the, the same is reiterated in Section 35 to pertaining to a detained person. And uh, in this instance, the detained person also includes um, a, a, a suspect who is in, 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 in custody, custody, as it was held in the, <coughs> in the Sibajan case. But to come back to the judge's rule, um, Rule number eight says um, the caution to be administered to a person, in other words, that has got a right to not to make a statement and what the consequences thereof is uh, or are, says the caution to be administered to a person in custody should be to the following effect. And the rules distinguish between a person who is formally charged and a person who is not formally charged. Uh, in the case where a person is formally charged, it says, do you wish to say anything in, in, in answer to the charge? You are not obliged to do so, but whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be used uh, in, in, in evidence. And we submit, my Lord, that th this is what this form caters for. Um, and paragraph B says, where a prisoner volunteers a statement otherwise than on a formal charge. In other words, um, uh, in this instance that we're busy with, if um, the accused volunteered a statement, mm -hmm. and here the judge's rule refers to a statement, where a prisoner volunteers a statement otherwise than on a formal charge, uh, the warning that should be admitted, uh, should be administered, yeah, administered should be um, to the following effect. Before you say anything, um, I must tell you that you are not obliged to do so, but whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. Um, we submit, my Lord, that uh, what we are currently seized with is just, it's not a statement, uh, it's just a mere explanation, an alibi that the accused gave that he was at work on the particular day which was uh, subsequently followed and we submit therefore my lord that this form that my learned friend wishes to make use of um, is irrelevant purely on the basis of uh, 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 evidence and and should not be uh, used as a yes thanks yes you <laughs> can continue <coughs> I see the witness. Oh, okay. You want to talk to Mr. Baloy? Uh, I was asking to address. I was asking to address the court before the defense asked a question. There is something that is bothering me, my lord. 
Ok. Le gabelé. Ma vanne, Jorge Hope Jorge, il est pampire, il est caché vers le dira, ma vanne. Yesterday, the court asked me to bring a document of cases that we were doing. I brought the documents as the court has asked me. I've written down all the cases that we were doing and they are the names of the accused. I also gave it to Advocate Badoi contained in an envelope. <coughs> As we were sitting and we during the break, my lord. I saw the document when I handed it over to Mr. Baloy, it was written confidential. However, I saw the document now roaming around in, in court, man. Who else had that document? I saw Muzi in possession of it and all the accused were reading it. Uh, who gave them that? Do you know? Uh, I can say. Wait, wait, wait. Let him have his say. Who gave it to? I can say. I do not know who gave it to them, my lord. And now I am being worried, my Lord, for our witnesses, especially in those cases. And uh, <coughs> and some of those cases also affect the some of the accused. I would not mention them by names. And in all these cases, my Lord, there are firearms that are involved. But, but people were shot. But what were people were kidnapped. And other people were threatened. So I was worried if my witnesses would still be alive tomorrow. As I am saying that, my lord, there are a couple of case numbers there. <coughs> Computing system here in a computer system here in SAP. So we have to create my visual address. Charge the charge. It is possible that they can go into our SAPs computers so that they would get their names and the addresses of our witnesses. By so saying, I am not accusing Advocate Mugomezulu, but he brought a certain case which he got into our system of a Nongoma case. And it shows accused number one. And more of the mutom in Chedi Janu and the Golden Witch, such as Mozumbezu, like so Naki Lopolagavana. On top, it shows that a person that has retrieved that case, it's Sergeant Mgomezu. I'm not sure if is that Sergeant related to him or not. <laughs> Hello, you're going to show her now. 
So that's I am I am afraid, my lord, that will others not be able to retrieve the same information as mm. he received it as well. Uh, and I would also like to ask when I brought that document, was it for the defense or was it for the accused? That's for the court. Actually, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Because that document is supposed to be perused by me first. Because I'm aware of the Intelligence Act that certain documents are classified. I'm aware of it. I've dealt with cases like this in the past. Even when apartheid was applicable, where you approach a judge in chambers and the judge makes an order and reads it in chambers to the presiding advocates. But because we are so-called in a new dispensation of transparency, I made it in open court. But that document or those documents are not supposed to be seen by anybody except me, first. he was trying to avoid a situation where in South Africa people and judges are accused of being bought, being captured and all that nonsense. And I was going to familiarize myself with that information, having regards to the Intelligence Act and protocols. And I would have decided what information, having regards to the proceedings here, has to be divulged to, to the councils here. Are you, are you with me, sir? That is understood. Mr. Baloi, what is your excuse? <laughs> As a good case, my lord, um, the document was disclosed to my colleagues in, in line with what the court said yesterday, that it's only meant for the eyes of the um, the court as well as the defense counsel. No, but they say the accused were reading it. Yes, well, um, <coughs> they got it obviously from the. Uh, yes. Actually, I'm shocked, you know, that senior counsels like this can actually behave in this matter. I'm just shocked. I explicitly said it's only for the court officials. Now you're telling me the accused are having. This gentleman is right when he says he doesn't know whether tomorrow some of the witnesses will be dead or not. Because this is unfortunately is a type of case we are dealing with, unfortunately, where people are said to be shot, etc., etc., etc. But I've just asked my learned friend to give back the copies to minimize the, um, the impact yeah. that might be. Uh, and, and with the copies will then be. Mr. Gumezuru, what's your <coughs> view now? My Lord, uh, I would like to exonerate uh, myself from. Hello? I would like to exonerate myself. I've never consulted with the clients or with the accusing. Uh, where did your clients get the document? Or did it, no. who, 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 which, which client and which? which Muzi and all of them, they were... Who is Muzi? Accused number who? Muzi number one. Accused number one, my lord. He was reading that document. He took it and he went towards them and they were all together reading the document.
Yes. And Mr. Lisi? My Lord, I feel a bit uh, uncomfortable when the court says, yes. and I'm saying this with utter yes. respect for the court. When the court says the court is shocked that the senior counsel such as us here, uh, if it's true, we, we do yeah, such a right. despicable thing. It, it is if, indeed despicable. If, if it is true, yes. But what worries me is, uh, I don't think statement that has been uttered by the court in the circumstances where it has not been determined exactly what the circumstances were through which this accused person were able to see that document. It's a bit appropriate man, because now it seems as if all of us they just decided to stand up and give these documents to... No, no, fine. You can tell me. Did your, client, did your client see that document? I, 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 I did not consult with my client this morning. Did you see? Did. You don't know if you saw the document? I don't know whether okay, I saw the document Mr. or what. Mr. My Lord, I'm not too sure. Why is this witness worried about the, the statement that he has made? Because in his own statement that he made on the on the 25th of October 2023, he refers to one of the cases where... No, that's obf obfuscation. Do you know that word? Obfuscation. Yes. Hello? Do you know obfuscation? I'll have to go to the dictionary. O-B-F-U-S-F-U-C-A T-I-O-N, obfuscation. That's what you're doing. So dealing with the present situation, you're telling me about an affidavit of a, a person who you say... No, no I'm We're not. talking about a court order which said he must bring that information and it mustn't be made available to any other person except myself, maybe, and then, the council. That's, now you're talking about... Yes, then in that information that he provided, in his statement, I'm saying in his statement, he refers to one of the cases that are detailed in that document that he provided to, to my colleague this morning. One of the cases are referred there in his own statement that he made. So I'm, I'm failing to understand, my Lord, how old I have You not. don't even know what cases he's referring to in the document which he wrote. Maybe the very case you are quoting is not of any moment, according to him. Are you with me? It's like the Nongoma case. You can, you can mention it because we have dealt with it. My God, the, the, the court is not understanding what I'm saying. I understand saying. fully, sir. So your client, did your client have access to that document, sir? I did. Court, this court. Hello? I, I did consult with my client. And you showed him the document? I, I consulted him based on one case that is mentioned in that sir, document. Sir, did your client consult have access to the document which I said the sergeant should write for my own perusal. The, yes, he did, because I had to consult with my client based on the case that the, the witness has documented in his own affidavit. The consultation was based on that. Ms. Mishola, what's your view? May I, may I ask back leave to consult with my client because I personally have not uh, read that information. You are not aware of that information. Of that information, but may I just clarify from my client if he... Uh, yeah. Thank you. My Lord, I have not personally, I have not read or consulted with my client regarding the document that was given to us by the state. And my client informs me that when they were grouped together with accused number two, four, and five, they were reading this document, my Lord. 
or maybe if I can just show it it's to my It's not the one that is prepared by... It's not the one, my lord, yes. And they are indicating the page that they were looking for. Where Whose document is that? It's an indictment, my lord. Oh, they were reading the charge sheet. Yeah. They were reading the charge sheet. They, they have been reading the past three, five years. No, my lord, but that's what no, was no, happening. No, I hear you. Yes, yes. This Where is, is that confidential document, mister? The document because they were reading? Because now we're getting yes. the fact that now... Sorry, my lord, can I just get further instructions, my lord? I see yeah. the hand is up for my client. Yeah. Thank you. my lord as to what were they discussing in this indictment my lord he says they were discussing about witness number 104 who is being referred well they can discuss their indictment no problem. Indi yes, yes, no problem well, i just wanted to be clear no, fine. I as to that. what is it that they were yeah. discussing in this, this inquiry is about whether or not this order which i made has been exposed yes those are those are my submissions Mr. <laughs> where's that document which you, which you given by? Yeah, I'm just trying to get all the copies from my colleagues. My, my lord, uh, before the copies are, are, are being taken back, with your respect, my lord. I want the copies which the gentleman, the witness, made to be put in the same envelope, which was supposed to be for my eyes first. You know, during apartheid, I must say this, we had apartheid judges in these treason trial cases where a judge would make an order that an investigating officer should do what I did. And then he would say that the order is just for the court. And even the counsels who were in court would never, ever be aware of that order because the judge then had a discretion whether to disclose that information or not. And invariably, he never disclosed that information. Now, we think we've got a democracy here which is functioning. And then court officials will know what to respect when a judge says that order is made to divulge certain information which is not supposed to be made available to the public. Just check whether all these documents are the ones which you... Do you have a copy of the original document? How many? How many? original document. I gave Mr. Baloy the original document, and and he made copies for himself. So that's one. There was one document. Okay. I do not have it. I said he should do it for me. Is it Gininda who know? Just listen to me. Is it Brigadier Gininda who know? Under which section of the Intelligence Secrets Act these documents are categorized? intelligence. Uh, I am informed that they are on the Secret Service and Crime Intelligence. Okay, can you bring those documents? <coughs> In the nature of things, these documents are not going to form part of these proceedings because that evidence has now been contaminated. And this court has got a, a discretion to decide whether to make these documents available as I originally intended. Because from what this witness is telling me, if I do that, some people's lives will be jeopardized. 
It's not saying that. He talks about people being killed. He talks about guns swelling around. He talks about kidnapping. He talks about whether his witnesses will be safe and alive tomorrow. So this court makes a ruling that this information has been expunged from the record of these proceedings on the basis of the fact that it may jeopardize other persons' lives, which are more important than the life of this judge. Okay, Ms. Michelle, let's go. My Lord, can I ask that we take uh, the long adjournment and now resume after lunch? Okay, what's, what's the time? It's um, two minutes after one. My Lord, we're debating the, the, the issue. Um, is Council now going to proceed? Yeah, I'm going to proceed with the cross examination. Uh, along the lines that she was doing. Yes, yes, yes. But the only order I made is that this confidential doc information. Just for my own edification, where are the 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 dockets? The docket did the guy. Docket here, fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, for sure, us. Since my Isha decision, I saw case number. The case number, I think. Five three four. I can't say what the charge. What's the charge? Yeah. The charge. We're not talking about dealing in drugs. Dealing in drugs, my lord. Yeah, it's five three four. If I recall, five three four. Something. Yeah. Six. Horos iri ekari ke five three four six. And the other one? Yengwe. Eki anongoma one six zero ten. And this one it's for anongoma one six zero ten twenty eighteen. One six zero of ten. 2018? Yes. Where is the docket? Uh, I did not get it where I left it, as Kenel Ginda said he will come and look for it. And the other one? Those are the two that the court needed. Okay, two o'clock. My Lord, my Lord, can I can I make one submission, my Lord, which you respect? I know the court has ruled but it is my request that that information that has been uh, taken back from us, it must not also be kept with the court. Why not? Because that information is coming from the witness. Did you hear the ruling I made? Yes, my lord. What, that, what was that, the ruling? That were not entitled to it. The order was that the, wit the witness must bring this information for the court purposes. Right. Yes, my lord. My request my lord is that the information cannot come from the witness direct to the court without us having been given an opportunity to look at the information that is submitted before this honorable i thought you had seen it all of you you just gave a, co a copy didn't you give a copy i, I have not seen it my lord okay thank i you. have not seen it my lord. thank you this information will form part of the proceedings of this as the court so that if this case goes somewhere else, the the judges in the in the SCA, SCA and the judges in the constitutional court Thank will have access to this. As the court I'm not so naive as to take the information which has been led to this court and go and keep it in my sitting room. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, now, now that time to 